This is a 3D printed bauble, you know, for Christmas. But it looks super weird, and that's because it's also a puzzle. Based on a Rubik's Cube 3x3 twisty puzzle, this multicolor monstrosity is easily scrambled, but next to impossible to solve, with a cryptic pattern baked right into the print. And in this video, I'll show you how I designed it and the absolutely torturous process of turning an assembly like this into a multicolor print. Let's get started. Many years ago, I explored the mechanism used to create the very first Rubik's Cube and created a version which could be 3D printed. It was super cool and actually worked pretty well, but the issue was color. A real Rubik's Cube or similar twisty puzzle has six or more colors to differentiate all the separate tiles. And if you don't have that, well, how can you solve it? I created a negative of the mechanism which you can use to cut up almost any shape using a Boolean cut, and you can use it to create awesome shape morphing twisty puzzles, but they're still not as striking as I would have liked. If the parts could have different colors baked into them though, well, that would be pretty sweet. I'll be honest, I've never been a big fan of multicolor 3D printing because it always seemed like a lot of wastes for a kind of meh result. And I much prefer to just paint my 3D prints instead. But you can't really paint parts in a complex sliding mechanism because it'll just rub off. And I'll admit, thanks to MMU systems like the AMS Lite from Bamboo Lab for the Bamboo Lab A1 and A1 Mini, multicolor 3D printing has gotten a heck of a lot more reliable and accessible. But simply 3D printing a standard Rubik's Cube would be boring, plus you'd need at least seven colors. And why limit yourself to something that you could just go and buy from a store? So I had this idea of creating a complex pattern on the surface of a sphere, which would flow smoothly across the segments, only aligning correctly once the puzzle is solved. And well, because it's Christmas, I wanted to make it look a little bit festive. A solvable Rubik's Cube inspired bauble. Yes, bauble is a very funny word. Let's dive into the CAD. The body of the puzzle is a simple sphere, but it's those swept surfaces that really start to up the complexity. Each sweep is a randomized spline that rotates as it passes through the part. There's one from the top down and another running across the part, creating this mess of spiraling, intersecting geometry. These surfaces need to be offset into the sphere by a small amount in order to create the separate bodies that can then be assigned to a secondary filament. And I did that by offsetting the surface of the sphere inward by two millimeters and using that offset surface to trim the swept surfaces. Once trimmed, I then thickened the surfaces into solid geometry, and that's where the real fun begins, with no less than five Boolean operations. First, I unioned the swept details into one body, and then I intersected them with the sphere to remove the excess material. Boolean intersections are criminally underused for super useful stuff like this, so if you'd like to learn more about how to use them and make super interesting optical illusion 3D prints, then you can check out this video here. To make the parts nest together properly, I did a Boolean cut, just make sure you tick keep tools, and we're left with this crazy looking thing. Yes, it's quite a lot of steps, but the cool thing about doing it this way is it's super easy to go back and change things, like the shape of the surfaces, or how deep they're sunk into the sphere, and the model will update. But then how do you cut up this funky looking Christmas bauble into a fully functional Rubik's Cube? Well, it's easier than you might think. I imported the anything to three x three cutter, which is essentially the negative shape of the mechanism. And then I used it to Boolean cut the sphere and then the surface details. There may be smarter ways of doing this, but the resulting model is now in theory, a fully functional twisty puzzle made up of heaps of separate bodies. And they all form parts of the puzzle, whether it's the main bodies of each piece or the tiny surface details that will need to be printed in a separate color. I need each of the puzzle parts to be isolated somehow with the correct color assigned and then oriented correctly on the print bed for printing. For single prints, it's easy. Just export them all into the same 3MF and import that into your slicer. It'll ask if you want to load it up as a multi-part object. You say yes, and that works fine. But if you try to split it into smaller components for printing, it splits everything and the parts are no longer located where they need to be. Put simply, you get all or nothing. Obviously, I found a way to do it, but it took way longer than I expected to figure it all out. Purely by accident, I discovered that assigned appearances within Fusion could actually be translated to different colors in Bamboo Studio automatically, which is pretty cool and no doubt useful for a lot of different models. 
but I couldn't find a way in Fusion to group each puzzle piece together further in a way that it would keep them from splitting apart in the slicer. No, the solution for that came from the most unlikely of sources, a quaint piece of abandoned ware that I haven't talked about on the channel for a very long time. Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer was, and still kind of is, the best free mesh editing tool available for the manipulation of mesh files for 3D printing. And I've used it for all sorts of things, like one of the first videos on this channel, turning video game assets into 3D printable models. And it's incredibly good at sorting and organizing multi-body mesh files. Mesh Mixer was originally a research project created by Ryan Schmidt, and the last version was released in April 2018. Since then, Autodesk has taken features from Mesh Mixer and incorporated them into Fusion, which is handy, but Fusion isn't free for everyone, like Mesh Mixer was, and they haven't ported over many of the features that made it such a killer bit of software. And unfortunately, I do also need to mention that since the last version was released, various 3MF file exploits have been discovered, and Mesh Mixer was flagged as vulnerable to a zero-day exploit, which is not good. Autodesk was informed, and they literally replied saying they're not gonna fix it. So there you go. It takes a bit of time to combine all the individual parts into their pieces, but not nearly as long as the other methods I was attempting. And then you can export these individually or all at once. But what's really cool is if you export them all at once, the part groupings will be preserved when you split the model in the slicer, keeping all of those little pieces exactly where they need to be. Regrettably, however, the automatic colors that did translate before are no longer there. So after splitting the object into parts, you will need to go through each part one by one and manually assign the colors. I suspect this is because the 3MF file that Mesh Mixer exports is a pretty old version of it now and doesn't seem to carry the material data that the one out of Fusion does. Assigning the colors isn't too bad though because it seems that the bodies are based on size and you can use the arrow keys to choose which filament to use. Annoyingly, I found that if you export as an OBJ with per vertex color, it actually will assign the colors on import, which is awesome. But once again, you can't then split the puzzle further or it'll split everything. It's frustrating. I would honestly pay for an updated version of Mesh Mixer because its death feels like a huge loss for the 3D printing community. And look, I might have missed a better way to do this. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. But anyway, with the parts correctly assigned and separated, we can now arrange them for printing, which is actually pretty straightforward using the Lay on Face tool. Many of these parts, however, do need support material, but I chose to just leave it on automatic support generation. I semi regret this, as you'll see later, but it worked okay for the most part. And with all of that, and a quick sanity check of the G code, it's time to send it to the printer. Total print time, just under 24 hours. I tried two different color combinations. The first was with Prusament Galaxy Green PLA and a random spool of silver silk PLA, but the silk had heaps of stringing, which is unfortunate, but the second combo is by far the best. I used this gorgeous roll of cookie cad filament, which subtly shifts between pink and orange with a pearlescent sparkly finish, and I marked out the pattern with dark striking lines of Prusament Galaxy Black PLA. For the most part, the support removal process was okay, but some of the interface layers were sort of really under extruded, which is odd, and it didn't break away cleanly. I have no idea what happened here, but I actually had to sand those areas of the print to get the puzzle to assemble correctly. Finally, I printed the core of the puzzle, and it's this core that holds everything together. Long M3 screws secure each centerpiece in place, threading in M3 lock nuts into the core, which lets them rotate without the screws backing out. And I found that a tiny spring between the part and the M3 screw really helped the mechanism function without jamming up too badly. These combo spring packs are very cheap and handy to have around, but the springs I wanted to use were too long. Using this huge pair of pliers though, easily fixed that. Just don't attempt to cut hardened steel wire using your electronic side cutters because you'll trash them instantly. There are so many moving parts, literally, and I'm not gonna lie, it was incredibly tedious putting the whole thing together and making sure it could actually function. But there are a few details that help. Having the CAD as a reference to locate the center parts is a must, and I started by securing five of the center parts in place. Each part actually has a sequence of numbers stamped into it as well because of the pattern, and these act as locating symbols to help identify where each piece needs to go. For example, two lines up with a mirrored two, and so on. These numbers legit saved me when it came to assembling this thing. I took my time, slowly put it together, and figured it out. Because as it turns out, despite my attempts to create a random pattern, 
Many pieces look like they should line up, only to not line up with their neighbors. Even with all the references, I had to swap parts around quite a few times to get it right. But finally, it's done. Now you can explore microscopic worlds. After days of trying to figure out how to 3D print this thing in multicolor, I am stoked with the result. It took a long time to assemble, it's fiddly, it jams up a bit, it doesn't run as smoothly as you might like, but it does operate as a Rubik's Cube puzzle using the original mechanism that the first Rubik's Cube came out with. Now, there's many better mechanisms that exist for these twisty style puzzles, so it probably could be improved quite a bit, but that's not really the point. I really wanted to push my knowledge of multicolor 3D printing with complex assemblies like this. But the question remains, is this puzzle even solvable? Well, not for me at least. There's no way I'd be able to solve this once it's scrambled because I can't even solve a standard 3x3 Rubik's Cube. However, just because I can't solve it doesn't mean that one of you guys might be able to. So if you think you could solve this incredibly flawed Rubik's Cube style puzzle, leave a comment below because I'm going to choose one lucky person or unlucky, however you might view it, to actually send this to so you can have a crack at solving it yourself. A huge thank you for watching this video and all my videos throughout the year. Hope you guys have an incredibly safe and enjoyable festive season. And I'll catch you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye.